Hey, howdy, hi, how's it going? Uh, my name is uh, Mason, Mason Allen, uh, as my thing should say, because that is the name that I write under. Uh, geez, I always forget that, don't I? Pressing forward, um, we have with us here tonight Erica, Cameron, and Jeff, and we are going to be talking about Amazon Vela, a very recently uh, debuted serialized uh, publishing platform done by Amazon online. Um, guys, to kick it off, let's just let's just go with some uh, comprehensive. What do you guys think of the platform so far? I hate it. Uh, oh, uh, should I say something else? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this for a second. Ah, okay. Kindle Vela. I so like the idea of being able to put out sort of like these serialized little stories where you can actually have sort of this um, really tight circle between you and the feedback you're getting from, um, from readers where they can throw likes at you or faves and you can sort of write to the market a little bit uh, quicker and in a more responsive way than with traditional publishing. Uh, love that idea. In the realization of what, what Amazon is doing with Kindle, in my opinion, it's pretty half-baked. Not only tool, the tools that they offer to authors in order to control their content, for, for instance, if I've got an episode that is scheduled to be released, um, but has not yet released, I can't go in and edit it for no good reason whatsoever, other than that they won't let me. Um, th that's, that's small potatoes, that sort of level of stuff. But the bigger issue to me is that um, they, Amazon made a lot of noise about Kindle to authors, but do not seem to have done anything to try to bring in readers. And so what am I there for? Uh, just to be really upfront with, uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm sort of, ranting. Um, to be really upfront about sort of where I'm at, I've got one story on Kindle. It has 11 episodes, the last of which I think it hits today. I had them scheduled out over a couple of weeks. Um, I have 13 likes across all 11 of those episodes. Three of those are from Jeff, three of those are from Erica, and six of them are from me. <laughs> no, seven of them. Sorry, that adds to 13. Uh, where I actually logged in on my wife's business account on Amazon. And I was like, I'm going to spend a couple of bucks and give myself some faves so that I can try and push something. Nothing. Th uh, on day one, there were 40 pages of fantasy stories. There is no discovery options whatsoever other than just sort of a top 10 kind of list. Socks. Socks. I hate it. Socks. Also, just to be clear with the viewers, like I have not dealt with Vela at all. Um, and we're hoping that I will come into this as clueless as maybe some of you are. Also, just to also make this clear, when Cameron refers to Kindle and I referred to Vela, we're referring to the same thing. It's called Kindle Vela, uh, just to clear that up. Anyway, Cameron, thank you for your thoughts. Jeff, Erica. Any further thoughts and responses from you guys? I defer to Erica first. So my skepticism for Bella when I first heard about it is that it reminded me of Quibi, which was a very short-lived video streaming platform that tried to be YouTube and Netflix at the same time. And it died after a lifespan of technically it was launched in 2018, but it didn't really try to be a thing until 2020. And then it died in late 2020. And so their idea was, oh, people liked watching short videos on YouTube or TikTok where you watch videos for free. And people like watching full length movies that somebody has spent millions of dollars and an entire year making on Netflix for a subscription fee. So why don't we give them short, high quality content on a streaming app for a fee? And they thought they were striking this happy middle, but it was actually an unhappy middle because if you want to watch a high quality thing, you go to Netflix. If you want to watch something short and you don't care how great it is, you go to YouTube. So why am I paying to watch a five minute video when there's so much of that on YouTube for free? And where Bella falls is 
the one on the spectrum, there's free fiction published by anybody. And this can be the full range of, I just fired off some fan fiction and there's millions of typos in it to I have a very polished serialized story on something like Royal Road or Wattpad or Radish that somebody has put as much effort into as a traditional published book. And you can read all that for free. And then if the author makes money, it's through a Patreon or through some similar system where it's voluntary support. But this is a mandatory support and people are used to paying mandatory support for eBooks. There's plenty of eBooks you can buy for from $1.99 to the, the price of a normal print novel. And people understand that, but I think there's a similar quibby unhappy medium where people think, well, why am I paying to read short fiction in installments when I can do all this for free on, on another serialized writing platform. Yeah, I, I certainly had my doubts when I first saw uh, Cannabella come out because I was like, this just feels like a worse model than what we already have. Just like Erica is saying, as it came closer to the time that Cannabella was going to launch and I kept getting emails from Amazon like, hey, we're launching, we're launching, you should, you should do something. I was like, I kept thinking about what were described as the kind of glory days of self-publishing, how back in the day, there weren't that many people self-publishing books and Amazon really helped the books that were out with, you know, the also bots and not needing to be pay to play as it is these days. And it made me wonder if Kindle Vela would be that again, if it would be an opportunity to get out there. It's not completely saturated yet. People could discover you and Amazon would help push you basically like, free marketing to get their platform going, right? Um, and I gotta say, as uh, Cameron brought up, I, I'm kind of shocked that there's just nothing. It seems like, you know, you go onto the regular Amazon page, like if you're gonna buy something, I don't see anything being like, hey, we just we just launched Kindle Bella, come check it out. Um, it feels like an incredibly soft launch that they're just doing it for writers and people that know writers who have been told about it um, to, I guess, work the kinks out. And they're, they're definitely kinks. Uh, for me, forever, like if you try to sort by most popular, you couldn't. Like you, you couldn't actually have a listing of what are the most popular stories, even though some stories definitely add more thumbs up than others. Um, I, I, I also want to take responsibility for urging the writing group to, to post on it. was like, hey, everybody, this could be an opportunity. If you've got something, let's do this and let's see what Amazon does. We all had something listed and Cameron and Erica kept theirs on. And I was like, mm, no. And the reason, <laughs> the reason I said no is, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, is I am also already posting on Royal Road. And I was like, wait a second, I think I'm gonna completely overcommit and need to release chapters for both of these things every week. And I'm gonna make one of these two groups unhappy and I didn't wanna do that. Um, but officially apologizing on the internet to my, <laughs> to my mates and, uh, in, in the group about, I am sorry um, about that. And I'm sorry that it's been such a bumpy road. I am honestly so shocked that we haven't seen Amazon do more. It's kind of sad, it just is sad. Or anything. Like, I, I, I really can't, I mean, it seems like they were just like, hey, we need to get on that serialized thing. That's sort of a big new thing. Let's let's throw something out there and see what happens. And then you've got a, just a bunch of people not really knowing how to manage this content or uh, promote it or anything, because I don't see any promotion anywhere. You call it a soft launch, I'd call it a flaccid one. I think Jeff is a very, example. I'm just going to say that descriptive language right there is why you buy a Cameron Hopkins book. Erica, you were going to say something. I was just going to say, I think Jeff is a perfect example of the Quibi problem because he's a choice of, do I take this story that I've been workshopping for such a long time and we're reading it, it's good. Why do I put it on Bella or do I put it on Royal Road and and Bella, since they're trying to get their act together, Royal Road has a greater audience potential right now because people can go read it for free. And you don't have to pay for this sub subscription model that Amazon is offering. Well, and what I was also surprised about is I've been on Royal Road for a couple months now, and I 
haven't really done any advertising besides making a couple of forum posts that have my signature, which can go to my book. And I've got a lot of views, not, not as many as I say a lot, a lot for me and my expectations. There are people out there with thousands, millions of views, right? Um, and I'm in the hundreds and that, that feels good for the amount of work that I put into promoting it, which is virtually nothing. Um, but that made me think, oh, you know, like a hundred people looked at my first chapter um, and I did, did nothing, right? So surely Amazon, Kindle, there'll be people looking, people will scour and go through. And I just thought there would be a community there that just doesn't seem to be i mean don't get me wrong we can look at the highest trending story wolf which i'm forced to like um has 6769 thumbs up so that's not such as readers that people being like yeah but the next highest one is like only 1832 and that's still a thousand but kindle has been out for what a month now ish it, right About in that realm months. yeah and so that's that's not that high when you compare to other like free sites and the numbers that the top top rank thing is getting now we could say new platform but is it it's amazon it's kindle but i think again that's what they've missed is i feel they have not converted their kindle users to kindle vela which was certainly my expectation at least some of a decent chunk of them would move over and it doesn't seem to have happened From um, my perspective Sorry, go ahead, Mason. No, no, no. You're good, Cameron. You're good. I was just going to say, for clarification's sake, because I'm forgetting this, is Royal Road a fairly recent development as well, or has that one been around for a bit? That one's definitely been around longer. Um, I, I, I know certainly not nearly as recent as Vela. Right? No, no. I mean, Vela's brand yeah, yeah. new. Uh, Royal Road's been around okay. for years. Um, I just don't know if it's, is it decade? Is it, um, you know, when, I don't know when Royal Road started. Uh, I, I will right. research that while right. we continue this, right. what's right. left right. of this right. conversation. Um, Cameron, go ahead, sorry. My sort of post-mortem, even though I'm hoping that it isn't truly a post-mortem as far as uh, Kindle Vela goes, I had this uh, novella already written that I cut up into chunks and put up in episodes with the idea being that if I can get some readership, I've got some continuing adventures that I can uh, spin out. And if that seems worth it, then I'm certainly gonna do that. As it stands right now, there don't seem to be any discovery tools within Vela for people to find me. And I'm down in that soggy middle bottom area where there's, there's no way for anybody to find me. And so my hope that anyone is gonna find this story is sinking rapidly to the point where I'm gonna go back and revise the little author's note on the end of my last episode. And instead of saying, new episodes coming, Adventures of Taggart continue, it will be, hey, I hope you enjoyed my story. If you liked it and you want more, drop me a line on my website. And if I get enough interest, I'll come revisit this. Because at the moment, like I said, literally three people have seen this story and they're the people who had already seen the story because we, we workshopped it in our writing group already. So bit of a failure for me. Um, uh, maybe you've got to spend advertising money on it, but that's sure not what I'm wanting to do with this right now. Um, just to make sure that I'm understanding correctly, Cameron, when you're saying there's nothing in the way of like discovery tools, are we saying there like isn't a search bar or rather like the listings are extremely short and very difficult to get onto, right? Like if you go to top fantasy stories, it's just the top 10 and yeah, that's I mean, the issue. You're, the, it's, an, it's an undifferentiated list of uh, rankings, right? And so you'd have to go so far down that list to find me nobody's going to ever do so. And there aren't very, it, it seems like for something like this, you would want some really specific um, branding, pigeonholing, uh, and capabilities to say, hey, what I really want to be reading is uh, vampire fiction. And mm -hmm. so I can find that. Or I really want a uh, Bigfoot erotica. I can go find that. I don't think there is that specificity of I, I don't, I'm not looking for Bigfoot erotica, just 
throwing that out there. But oh, if you want to, Cameron, we it. all listen. We've all been there. It's okay. I, I was going to say there are some filters, uh, definitely for big photo erotica. But no, there are there are some filters. But I think the problem is that they don't really still work. The the popularity one doesn't work. Even if you go in right now or go to fantasy and sort for popular. The first one looks like it's really popular. It's got a lot of thumbs up, like 10 ratings, only 10. That's really not that many. Um, and then you get down and like three down, we're, we're at to something with zero thumbs up, no no ratings. So it feels really random. Like the literally you go to popular fantasy, fourth down the list, has anyone ever read this? But it's fourth, right? Um, that makes no sense. And there's one that's been on here like the entire time that has only one episode in two thumbs up. It's been on the front page when you search for most popular. Now, I, I don't think, mean the front page. I think we lost on. So it, Oh, yeah, yeah we lost it for a second there, Jeff. Okay, we're back. I was just saying that the, the popularity doesn't seem to make any sense. Um, it's a complete hodgepodge of uh, some things that have had some people thumbs up them and other things that have no thumbs up, no ratings. Um, and it's not an ever-changing list because you might think, oh, well, maybe because there's so many stories, they're just rotating, right? Well, one, that's not really a filter for popular then. Um, but two, no, because I've seen some of these books. I'm not trying to call anyone out. Shout outs if you, you know, posted something there. But like there's a story, Three Queens, that I've seen since the inception always be on the front page if you search for popular. It's only got like two thumbs up. It's like, why... Why is this still here, you know? Um, so it just, it seems very strange. I think what works with Royal Road, and I'm not as familiar with other sites, I couldn't find out how old Royal Road is. I heard its height was like 2015 or something. There's still tons of people. So it's definitely been around for at least a handful of years, like half a dozen. Um, but what Royal Road is doing is when you post your story, there's a list of this story just got a chapter. So you can see like, oh, this just got a chapter. This just got a chapter. And even though there's a lot of people posting, it gives you like a moment where you're on the main screen, like briefly. And there's other reasons, like you could be trending if a lot of people start looking at you, then you pop up on trending briefly, or if someone writes a really great review and that pops up. And so there's like multiple ways to kind of get on the main screen, whereas this doesn't seem to, to have that. And at the very least, we all get promotion on Royal Road just by posting a chapter. Um, and so I think that's why I've got the views I do, because that, that's it for promotion. Whereas this, there's just, it doesn't exist. So I, they, they definitely have not found their stride or discovery. And I do wonder how many people will give up because of that. I'm certainly. The, the sad thing here is too, right? Like Amazon has, uh, from the outside looking in, it seems like Amazon has a lot to offer, right? Like they've already got their Kindle Unlimited service, which is fairly popular. Uh, they've got a massive, massive uh, buyer base that just goes on to Amazon to buy books, even not necessarily using Kindle Unlimited, right? Um, so in theory, it's got a large buyer base that goes on to Amazon for literature that could theoretically be diverted to this service, but as we've established by all appearances is not being diverted. And then on top of that, if you look at like Amazon's uh, categorizations of literature, right? It can get extremely granular, right? You've got like science fiction down into like martial science fiction down into like uh, faster than light, hard science, science fiction kind of things, right? Like it gets very, very deep in there to the point where you're going into categories that only have like a couple hundred books total um, out of a very, very large category of, uh, sorry, very, very large catalog of self-published and published literature. And so you'd think that those kinds of systems would be able to be brought to bear on a service like this. But as you guys are saying, obviously not. So there's a list of tags. Yet. Yeah, not yet. There's a list of tags. There's, you can jump into things that are popular tags. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you could make a list. It doesn't seem like you could do a filtered list of I want werewolves, vampires, epic fantasy, dragons, Bigfoot. You know, like, doesn't seem. We're like really that. hitting the Bigfoot tonight. Oh, I'm gonna. I got <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Emma, you are grounded from speaking forever. This is like, if, if we ever get big enough to make merchandise, I'm just going to make a Bigfoot t-shirt as just the deepest cut to this most obscure of episodes.
It's, it's, um, changing it's just subject. way worse. <laughs> Anyways, like I, I feel like we've kind of established pretty thoroughly some general thoughts and consensus on this particular platform that Amazon has put out. Is there anything specific that we have not discussed thus far that we want? Cool. Erica really did not like that talk about Bigfoot. Um, is there anything in particular uh, that we would like to discuss before we go ahead and wrap up for tonight? The only other thing that I, I think just people that are considering putting on Vela should know is that uh, if you put it on Vela, you're not allowed to put it anywhere else. Uh, the, the, the restrictions are very tight. Um, and I do think this is another thing that uh, creates a bit of an issue uh, because if you, uh, if you could put it everywhere, right? If someone could be like, oh, well, I'll just keep it on Vela anyway and put it on these other sites, cool, yeah. Uh, but since with Vela's restrictions, I think that is going to create further problems. So maybe, maybe we'll see them lift some of those subscriptions. It just seems unclear what they're wanting out of the uh, thing. It's not, I haven't gotten any future emails from them yet saying it's going great. Let's let me tell you how. It was like we're releasing, we're releasing, we're releasing. So, so we'll see. Welcome back, Erica. Hello. I'm sorry. Oh, I just heard sideways now. How about now? And now you're vertical. Yay. Um, we're just talking about any particular last thoughts that we have on the on this service since it feels like we've kind of hit um, kind of the same note at Fairmount. One last thought that Jeff and Cameron have both touched upon about Vela lacking a community is that Amazon is a store. A lot of websites are designed to be social medias. There are ways you can, you can gain attention and connect with people in Amazon reviews or whatever it is you're doing. But Amazon is a store where people go to buy things, not a social hub where people go to talk about things. And while Amazon is very good at the many, many things it does, the one thing it was never designed to be is a social club. So I feel like that's one thing that other serialized writing platforms are always going to have on this. Yeah, it feels like one of the things that Royal Road and the others have that this doesn't is any sort of forum system where people can sort of chat about the things that they're reading and uh, make recommendations to each other and talk about what they love and talk about what they hate. It's this whole community idea. And, and without that, it feels sort of like a hollow cash grab. Um, somebody must be grabbing the cash because I'm sure not getting it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, and, and until and unless things change considerably and they start putting some more resources into it, I don't intend to put more of my own resources into it. All right, well, blockheads, viewers, ladies, gentlemen, people of all ages and sizes, uh, thank you for joining us for this particular video. Um, and I guess at the end of it, to sum it all up, uh, Kindle Vela, we can't really recommend it to you yet. But, I mean, who knows? Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos has done a lot of things. Maybe he can pull this off. Um, until the lizard guy does, we'll be seeing you and stay safe out there, blockheads.